JJ Watt just called me out. Let's step into the huddle. You're listening to the Pre-Snap Podcast brought to you by LineStar app, the top-rated DFS tool set and number one companion for DraftKings, FanDuel, and Yahoo Daily Fantasy. Go LineStar Premium now at LineStarApp.com. Now here are your hosts, fantasy football experts, Joe Pizzapia and Scott Bogman. Hey, yo, what's up, everybody? It's me, Joey P, Joe Pizzapia, and welcome to the Pre-Snap right here on the line star app it is me it is scott bogman and it's you and we're recapping week 16 in the nfl hot taking week 17 and who's left playing and we've got fantasy football still happening dfs wise we've got real football playoff implications and we're still coming to you live via the line star app go get that line star app upgrade to that premium product you got basketball going right now you got football going right now you got baseball around the corner Come on, let's go. Let's get into it. And if you're playing baseball <clears throat> while you're at it, go pick up the Fantasy Baseball Black Book 2020 over on Amazon. It's a good spot for you. Start to get prepped. Good times over there. And uh, of course, Casey Bubba, who you know from the show, and Chris Meany, contributors to the Black Book. So they will help you get you set up for the entire MLB season. And congratulations, Boggs, a much different Scott Bogman today, or confident after a great yeah. or comeback. You could just tell in your face, like it's just so much better. Maybe it's maybe it's the Christmas season, or maybe it's the Pittsburgh win, or a combination of the two. But you seem you seem much lighter and happier today. No, it's the Steelers win. Like, oh, I like okay. Christmas and everything, but Steelers are way more important. So yeah, it, the um, I I was surprised that they were able to come back and win that game, but everything offensively seemed to click as soon as that Deontay Johnson touchdown happened. As soon as that deep bomb hitter finally hit for Roethlisberger, who's been trying for like six weeks to get one of those. As soon as that worked, seemed like everything opened up and the defense played a little harder and the Colts couldn't score in the second half. So uh, very happy about getting that locked up, getting that playoff win, and then getting a week 17 of Mason Rudolph and Miles Garrett once again should be fun. (laughs) <laughs> there you go and uh look big ben not playing this week and mason rudolph playing this week so a little extra r and r uh let's recap uh, the good the bad and the ugly from this past weekend uh over on fanduel the million dollar lineup this is well wow, three hundred thousand. i yeah you know i don't like this I, i'm just gonna say it okay <laughs> i love playing on fanduel i do a little looser than DraftKings. what i don't like is you know it's it's not a million dollar contest if you're not giving away a million dollars DraftKings giving away a million dollars every week it's just like, uh, you know, the Welsh got really upset by people saying Joe Mixon is out for the season because he's going to miss week 17 again. And it's like, come on, it's one, there's one week left for the Bengals. It's, is it really out for the season or is it out for the season finale? Come on. Stop saying out for the season. It's one week. I agree. I agree. These are these are the things, that, you know, the little things that get under your skin. But whatever. Here's the winning lineup anyway. Deshaun Watson, 26.76 points. Great day for him. Three touchdowns, 324. It was the Houston Texans stack, basically. David Johnson, who had 27 points, who I had in lineups and took out like an idiot. Uh, just because, <laughs> you know, I, I was looking at it going, Ugh, can I chase this, really? He was good last week. He's not going to do this again. And then he did. He did it again. His best game since 2016. He was, uh, it's uh, unbelievable. He was great. Yeah. Yeah. Brandon Cook's pretty good, too. He's in this lineup, 23.6. So, like I said, it was that stack. Then, of course, you had Austin Eckler. We only had 14 points, but Jamison Crowder showed up. He did everything you could ask for. T. Higgins had a good game, 18.9. Travis Kelsey, we talked about paying up for him, 19.3. That's what you get. C.D. Lamb, 21.9. And Carolina Panthers defense had themselves a day against Dwayne Haskins. That was a really good call as the uh, day uh, kind of went through. Now, in terms of defenses, too, Indianapolis, bad, bad, zero points. But Seattle, good. So we each had a defense this week. Mine was better than yours, but again, yeah. we'll, we'll flop back and forth, but the Carolina defense at 21, boy, Dwayne Haskins, what a gift he was. And uh, it, don't worry about Dwayne because it's okay. Uh, the strip club has a free buffet, so he'll be okay, guys. Don't worry. Oh about yeah. Him. Yeah. He'll be fine. Uh, someone will take a flyer on him. I'm not. No, I, they I, won't. I, no, they won't. They will. They will. They'll invite uh, him to camp, but he will not make a team next year. That guy. I, no I bet he still makes a team. He'll, he'll be backing up somewhere. So. Uh, Who would you rather have backing up your football team, Dwayne Haskins or Cam Newton next year? <laughs> oh, oh, Dwayne Haskins. Uh, I, I'm the sorry. Right the Josh Allen. Uh, I love this. Someone, uh, you know, put this on Instagram or tweeted out or something, but it was Josh Allen last night had double the amount of touchdowns in 
uh, you know, the Patriot stadium that Cam Newton has thrown this year. Cam Newton's thrown two touchdowns in that stadium and Josh Allen threw four. So just and ridiculous. They, and look, Josh Allen, <clears throat> he's my MVP. You know, I know Rogers is going to win it. At right. This stage, it kind of feels like it's that way, but I, I mean, wire to wire. It's been Josh Allen. He was the story from week one. He's the story in week 16. The fact that he can sit if he if they choose to sit him this week says everything you need to know. I mean, yep. he's he's outplayed Mahomes. He's the biggest fantasy quarterback point getter. He's made Stefan Diggs a star. Uh, I mean, come on. I mean, let's he go. Should, he should be the MVP. I'm with you, but they are going to give it to Rodgers. Like it's just Stupid. the media has made this a two uh, two man race between Rodgers and Mahomes. And, and if it's a and... two man race, I think it's Allen and Rodgers and Patrick Me Mahomes, too. my boy. But like he's kind oh, of he's great, but line. but he's not the MVP this year. It's either Allen no. or Rodgers. It's I, I agree. And, uh, there, it's going to go to Rodgers, but I, I think Derrick Henry, uh, you know, is in that mix as well. But I think you know if Derrick Henry's in that mix, we saw Derrick Henry versus Aaron Rodgers this Sunday, and Aaron Rodgers won that battle. So yeah, that's the problem. Yeah, Henry's out of that conversation. Um, on the DK side of things. Watson was in that lineup, 30 points for him. Montgomery with that bear stack worked out very nicely for us. Now, we didn't really get too many Jimmy Graham pieces there, but we did have Trubisky. We did a Montgomery and Robinson. He had 10 catches in this game. So bear stack was delicious. And exactly what Bogman said would happen did. The Bears ran up the score. They put up 41. And I want to say that was like the exact number that you said in last week's show. (laughs) They're going to run this up to like 41 or something. And they did. It's exactly what they did. Uh, David Johnson was brilliant again in this lineup. Michael Gallup got 33 points. Nobody saw that coming. And certainly not me. Good Lord, indeed. But I'll tell you who else didn't see it is Michael Jacquette. <laughs> he didn't see anything. <laughs> Dude, that stat that they threw up on that poor kid where he was targeted nine times and he gave up seven catches for 182 yards. I just felt so bad. He's just standing there on the sideline and they're throwing up that graphic. And I was like, dude, that's just wrong. Don't do that to that kid. Like that's X F L X F L. Yeah. Get out of here, man. He's going to be X NFL pretty soon. If you yeah. that uh, Brandon cooks was in this lineup along with Higgins and Andrews and uh, Jamison Crowder and the chargers defense. So that was only 2% owned, but really look, Michael Gallup was a game changer this week. CD lamb. And, and, you know, let's ask this question, too. Has Andy Dalton started to actually get comfortable now? Because this is three wins in a row, and all of a sudden he's not just focusing on one guy. Cooper had 100 yards. CeeDee Lamb had a good day. It just kind of went all the way around. It felt like it was just a good day for this offense altogether. Hey, he spreads it around, too. I think uh, looking at Andy Dalton targets to the wide receivers, it's 56 for Cooper, 54 for Lamb, 53 for Gallup. So he hits all of it. Whoever's open is getting the football. So – uh, he's playing well. I actually kind of hope the Cowboys make the playoffs. That would be, uh, they might be able to make some noise, uh, in the first round, depending on who they play. So should be a fun one to watch. Yeah. The Dallas Cowboys good for ratings and I'm not the tinfoil hat conspiracy kind of fella, but my God, Jalen hurts. His knee was down. Like, I don't care. What anybody tells me <laughs> Aaron Jones was out on the sideline and Jalen hurts. His knee was down. So. Welsh lost a championship because of that Aaron, Aaron Jones run. Like he, he lost by, uh, fewer than three points, and that was 3.7 yard uh, points that he got for 37 extra yards. So Welsh got screwed out of a, a title because of that. Sad story, bro. <laughs> <laughs> what a dick. <laughs> That's right, I am. All right, uh, let's uh, let's continue on here and let's start taking a look. Because look, this is a huge. You know, week 17 is you know the main slate is everybody. <laughs> you know, it's like oh, everybody jump in the pool. Okay, you got Sunday night football, and then the season ends. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, unfortunately, we're missing Washington and Philly, so who cares? Right, exactly. Know? Like, that's one game where you're probably like, yeah, it's fine. I'm good with that. But the other thing is, too, a lot of these defenses packed up their bags and went home weeks ago, so 17 yeah. is going to be ugly. So expect high totals. Look for teams like we looked for last week. You know, we, we love the stack of the Bears because they had to put up points, right? They had to make a statement. And I'll say this. I think in that game, it feels like Trubisky <laughs> saved his job and Matt Nagy's. Would you agree with that? A hundred percent. I, you yeah. know, we've been talking about that for a while now, but this is it's over with. That they, if they win this week, which is a really hard game against Green Bay, if they win, they're in the playoffs. They control their own destiny, and well, no either one way, they're going to be eight and eight. And if they yeah. lose to the Packers, it's the Packers and the MVP. And I think I, you, you just can't. You got to say, okay, well, at least we're ending strong. And I think that's how you take a look at it. And, and what they might do is they might beat the Packers this week and then play them again 
next week uh, right. in the playoffs because if the Saints win, Packers lose and the Saints win, uh, you know, I believe the Bears would be the seventh seed and the Packers would still be the two. So I can't keep uh, track of all that stuff. It makes me oh, it's, like, yeah, it's too much. It's like yeah. in basketball, you know, at the end when they're trying to, in the beginning <laughs> of the movie, and then by the end they say there's a rock, paper, scissors. Yeah, tournament. when Dan yeah. Patrick and Bob Costas yeah, are love that. sweating and yeah. going through it all. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's that's what it feels right like. That. Um, And look, there's going to be no defense, high pay lines it's going to be that kind of crazy thing i will say this too i think that uh, zach taylor definitely saved his job too because that team has yeah. shown up in the last couple of weeks they're up to four wins in a tie and they've got two of those wins without joe burrow right or three of well, them. well yeah and they beat pittsburgh with uh you know they beat pittsburgh with ryan finley and then they went with brandon allen this week and he threw for 370 yards or whatever it was so uh he's doing it with different quarterbacks at the helm too and winning in different ways so it how definitely saves Zach Taylor's job. How so. bad are the Houston Texans? How bad are they? It, well, at least uh, Miami has their first round pick too. Good Lord. Oh, it's yeah. <laughs> it's just, just terrible. I mean, you just stared at that. Like Bill O'Brien just basically lit an organization on fire in one Ugh. move. Like just on yeah. fire. Just unbelievable. I mean, Arizona, you know, if they make the playoffs, I think Bill O'Brien's going to get a key to the city of Phoenix. So, you know, <laughs> should. for should. giving giving the Cardinals DeAndre Hopkins for, you know, uh, nothing, basically. Very yeah. Well, David Johnson's been good, but he's not that good. Yeah. Well, look, but J.J. Watt said everything needed to be said. It was amazing. God, you got to love J.J. Watt. Like, that dude's just the best. Like, he just eats, sleeps, and drinks it. He, he has respect for the fans. He realizes, you know... It's like the antithesis of those guys who go on Twitter and says, I don't give a F about your fantasy team and all that stuff. Like there's JJ Watt going, yeah, I care about everything. Like I, I have respect for myself, respect for my profession, respect for you who is a fan of this game or who plays fantasy or, or, you know, whatever, who's, who's just there for it. And there right. for me being part of this, like he kind of gets it. We're all in this together thing. And that is just so refreshing. God, I love that guy so much. Yeah. He's uh he's great to watch and I can't wait till he's, in Pittsburgh next year with his brothers. It's going to be a lot of fun. Let me watch. tell you, I, I made that statement. I didn't say Pittsburgh, but I said he's their best asset to move because you can't move Watson. But you Watt, yeah. I think Watt is that one asset where some teams would line up there to take him. I know he's not what he was, but you got to start making some moves if you're Houston and start to rebuild this thing. And the only asset you have left is Watson and Watt. And you're not yeah. moving Watson, so I guess you can move Cooks, but I wouldn't that be hilarious? Cooks on another team <laughs> exactly. in another year, so at, at least we know this time it wouldn't be his fault. <laughs> All right, let's start uh, the hot takes for Week 17. Falcons at Bucks. Uh, look, you know, Falcons kind of <laughs> unbelievably held the Chiefs in check. I mean, the Chiefs made some mistakes in that game, but. Uh, the Bucks solidified their spot. They're ten and five. So, what are your thoughts on this one here? Bucks hosting the Falcons. I mean, I I think this is just a Bucks tune-up game before the playoffs. They are going to have to go on the road because the Saints, um, you know, have the division and everything. So, I, I think this is a Bucks rollover. Should be an easy one for them. I know Atlanta is playing better uh, and, and all that stuff, but I don't know. I when you're getting peak Tampa Bay, they're going to be tough to beat. All right, Giants, 5-10, and 10, taking on the 6-9 and nine Cowboys. Uh, this one's in New York, but as you said, Cowboys look comfortable. Andy Dalton's been playing his best football here these last few weeks, and all of a sudden, all the talent has kind of risen up a little bit, which has been great. Uh, I definitely like the Cowboys to beat the Giants here. It feels like the Giants have just run out of steam, unfortunately, but I am optimistic for them next year with Barkley back and maybe some more O-line help even. I know the O-line got better this year, but still – could always improve a little bit more, but I like the Cowboys in this one. And in terms of fantasy investment in DFS, Cowboys are going to need this win. So I'm in on the Cowboys. I love that the Giants can finish anywhere between the third pick in the draft and the 32nd pick in the draft going into week 17. <laughs> That's <laughs> one of my, my favorite things about the Giants. But but true, I, not 32nd, yeah. right? Yeah, well, if they won the Super Bowl, they would be. Oh, if they, they made the playoffs and won, won the Super Bowl, they'd be thirty second. So, uh, but the 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 Cowboys, I feel like, are going to win this game, kind of going away. All right, the Jets and Patriots. What a battle of futility this is! Oh my God, how God Cam Newton was so bad, so bad. Just, the Jets oh. are winning this game, Joe. Like they, they they put together a win streak. They're playing harder and better. I don't know why all of a sudden at the end of the year, but it doesn't matter if they win or lose this game. They're locked into the number two pick in the draft because Jacks have already locked up the number one. So might as well go out and beat the Patriots. So I think I, think, I, think I got right. the Jets in this one. 
Oh, God, on the road in New England. My God, Bill Belichick threw a phone. I'm going to go throw something. Uh, <laughs> Vikings at Lions. Um, you know, the Lions, Curly, you know, just just done. Uh, the Vikings yeah. obviously eliminated. But, you know, the Vikings, I think, will show up there, put some pride on the board. What are your thoughts on the Vikings in terms of are they an investable team this week? Yeah, I mean, Thielen and Jefferson will still be putting up yards. Cook will put up some yards as well. So, uh, yeah, I mean, this will be the least watched red zone game of the day for sure. But, yeah, I I think you got to go with the Vikings because the Lions have folded up shop. Now, what about the Steelers and Browns? Because with the Steelers sitting guys and the Browns looking just – I mean, they look shocked and dismayed and bewildered after that game. Baker Mayfield looked like he had just been (laughs) totally rocked. Can and you use and, all of the birdcage lines right there? Is that I what did. you did? Shocked, bewildered, dismayed. Uh, bewildered. Wrong I mean, response. Confused, yeah. bewildered, dismayed. <laughs> uh, I'm all, I mean, that was Baker Mayfield. I mean, he was like, he was as upset when they locked well, him out of the stadium in that commercial. He's like, guys, let me in. Healthy white out. Like, uh, you and know, then, what, what are we? Why, why did they abandon the run? Why did Kareem Hunt have four carries? Four I don't know. Skin. Yeah, I like, I can't give you a good answer on that, but I, I think there the Steelers. The Steelers are going to be resting way more than run. I don't care. You have to commit to the run and run everybody 20 times and just say, look, it's just not in the cards today. And, and of course, and Baker Mayfield is trying to throw these guys as if they're the regular guys. and They're not. No, uh, this is this should be uh, a Cleveland role because I think Pittsburgh's going to rest. They're not just going to rest Roethlisberger. There's no point just resting the quarterback. I think yeah, the Watt, number's nine and a half right now, though. I Watt don't, takes the seat, that. too. Uh, I mean, I, Cam Hayward maybe sits. I mean, you're not going to be able to sit everybody, but I think a lot of the big pieces for Pittsburgh are going to sit this game because they have doesn't a home feel, game. But does that feel weird to you as mm-hmm. a Pittsburgh seal? Like, you've lost three in a row. You get they the They haven't win. had a bye week this year. Like, even week four when they got their actual yeah. bye, they practiced for Tennessee all the way up, up to the game. So, you know, I guess maybe you could say that the Thanksgiving – debacle was a bye week for them really but was it it kind of wasn't they had to play the next wednesday and then played in five days so uh it's it's been a screwy season for pittsburgh so they're gonna take a week off and i don't blame them at all that's fair all right Bengals hosting the ravens the Bengals are dangerous right now but still the ravens are more dangerous the defenses play great lamar jackson we talked about paying up for him he had a good game uh, Marquise Brown has another touchdown. J.K. Dobbins, who we loved, had another touchdown. It's four straight games for him. I'll be heavy in on the on the Ravens this week. Defense, yeah. Lamar, J.K. Dobbins again. I'm in on the Ravens again. They got to run it up. They got to run it up. They got to win yeah. going away because uh, they have to. I mean, they win, they're in. But like you said, the Bengals are playing better football than they have all season right now. So uh, this is a time to pour it on and, and really blow them out of the water. So that's why they're going to be double digit favorites in this game. And I'm probably going to pick them. Now, as of recording this, we don't know what the Bills are doing. I assume they're going to be sitting guys, too. So the Dolphins certainly have every opportunity here. Who starts in this game? Fitzpatrick or Tua? Or should I say who should start in this game? Tua. Tua will start in this game. Uh, they, they've done this bit before where they, you know, they, they want Tua to be starting the playoff game. So Tua is going to start this game as well. If they falter and they fall behind, Fitzpatrick will go right in. It will be a very short leash for Tua, but I do believe he gets to start here. Uh, Seattle Seahawks at 49ers. Uh, Seahawks have taken care of winning this division last week. Here, here's a question for you: Is it a hot take to say that the the strength of the Seattle Seahawks right now is the defense? <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> not uh, right? They, they they've been playing great. Uh, we know Jamal Adams is very excited about making the playoffs for the first time ever. He's uh, he went on his little uh, rant yesterday too, which was great. And uh, yeah, Seattle's defense is playing great. They've been uh, one of the best teams against wide receivers over the last like six weeks. So. This is a good squad right now. Uh, San Francisco did show up, but Ayuk is out for this week. They don't have a lot of pieces. I mean, they're obviously a way better team with Kittle, regardless of who's playing wide out, but uh, they're not going to be good enough to beat Seattle this week. Well, the Rams are going to be playing John Walford at quarterback, which, I mean, doesn't John Walford sound like a guy who was in like an 80s metal band? Like he was like yes. a bass player or 
you know, John Wolford, unfortunately, won't be on tour with us. Like, I'm pretty sure he was in Spinal Tap. It feels like a Spinal Tap. <laughs> you know? Yeah, and then, uh, you know, Sylvester Sam might be starting for the Cardinals this week or whoever is it. Chris Sylvester, I think, uh, whoever it is, uh, is the backup for Kyler Murray at this point. But this also alone at this point. Get off of you. Uh, but, uh, yeah, th- this is, I can't believe this is a playoff game. This is a yeah. playoff game because the winner of this game makes the playoffs. I so, think Kyler will play. I, just, I don't know how, but I think he's going to play. Yeah, I, I would assume so too. But this is, uh, the Rams really, the Rams peaked and were the best team in the NFC for about a month. And now they're on the precipice of possibly not making the playoffs. It's just kind of crazy to me. Yeah, I mean, is is Jared Goff the quarterback of the Rams next year? I know that's yeah. a crazy. I, that's yeah. not a question. That's that's you not liking Jared Goff. He's still the. Well, I don't like him. He's since week thirteen. Nobody's got more turnovers than Jared Goff. Yeah, I understand that, but it's still. You know, <laughs> I he, understand that, but like uh, it's, he's giving. He's literally giving away the season. I mean, he's been terrible. And Sean McVay wants his job more than he wants Goff. I can guarantee you that. That's very true, but I just. Um, who are you going to bring in? Is he going to go get what? cousins? You're, like you're going to go uh, get a ba- a veteran Andy Dalton, Philip Rivers kind of guy, and bring him in there. I think next year because I don't think you're going to have this. I'm I'm telling you, they are not going to go with John Walford as backup quarterback next year. Not I know they've got no Blake capital. Bortles as a backup this week, so maybe he can resurrect something here. I don't know if I want to do that, <laughs> but I mean, let's not get crazy here. Uh, Colts and Jaguars. Um, Colts are playing for everything, so uh, Jonathan Taylor has been great. Uh, certainly we get on board with that. They've been spreading the ball around now. So that makes me like those wide receivers less, but I will be in Jonathan Taylor this week against the Jags and probably Phillip rivers as well. I think this is another good matchup for them. What do you think? I mean, poor Jaguars. They play two teams in a row that have to win and put up right. points and look good doing it and win going away. So this should be a cult stomping. This isn't going to be close. Yeah, I agree with you. Texans and Titans, Look, I, I mean, J.J. Watt read everybody the riot act, but I don't know if it's going to make a difference. You know, I think sometimes they they say when these things happen, people show up and all of a sudden become, you know, everybody rallies around and all that stuff. I'm tired of the Texans rallying uh, and the Titans yeah. need this game bad. I mean, this is very important for them, especially after losing to Green Bay. So, you know, would you I mean, is Derrick Henry like 100 percent? rostered this week against the I mean, he, there's so much on on this for him doesn't he what is it 223 yards to get to 2000 uh and you're playing the worst run defense in the nfl uh this this should be derrick henry running downhill in the fourth quarter you should get 400 yards i mean this if you're not playing derrick henry i don't know what you're doing how many does he need to get 2000 how is i think like, it's 223 i think it's yeah, 1773 or something like that i, I not against the texans uh, that that, <laughs> that that's within reach against Houston. So, oh goodness gracious! All right, Raiders at Broncos. Yuck! Gross pass. <laughs> Hard pass. I just can't do yeah. it. Although Nelson Raiders. Aguilar, was Nelson Aguilar bad all these years because of Carson Wentz? No, uh, okay. no, he was bad because he has that. no hands. I don't uh, know, man. He's got 800 yards receiving this year and like 50 catches. He's averaging 17 yards. Per reception this year. <laughs> yeah, but he and you know what the difference is? He's catching the ball this year. I mean, he he could have. Well, I want to give him that. credit because he's been very good this year. He has been good this year, and he's everything that we thought Henry Ruggs was going to be. Is what Nelson Aguilar right. is. So uh, it's good on him resurrecting his career and making a role for himself and all that good stuff. But uh, you know, I, I'm I'm not going to blame Carson Wentz in his bad year for Nelson Aguilar dropping footballs for the last four years before this. So all right, uh, uh, he, he had many opportunities. Chiefs are sitting everybody against the Chargers. Should we care? Should we be in on Herbert here in this game? Or should we be yeah. in on the rest of them? Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm in on Eckler. I'm in on Herbert. This is, you know, a Chiefs walkthrough game. They're not going to play very hard. So this should be a, a Chargers win easy. All right. Next on the list here, Packers and Bears. You know, <sighs> I, this is a tough one for me because <laughs> I've been I've been riding this wagon here, and if I really am a believer, then I should stay on this wagon because why should I get off it now? They're playing good football. Now they've been playing good football against inferior teams. The Packers are not an inferior team, and the Packers need this game to get the one seed. They yeah. need to win. So 
I think I'm I think this is a game where if there's a game stack out there, this is the one. I think you go into this game because there were a couple moments against Tennessee too where Tennessee had oh, a, a broken tackle here or there by AJ Brown. There were a couple moments where I thought Brown was going to get free and he didn't. And I think the weather just crushed the Titans in that game in the first half because you could see the footing was off. They were just in terrible spots there. And you know, it was just a couple bounces. Chris Collinsworth like, sounded like Rex Ryan out there talking about Devontae Adams' footwork. I mean, come on. That was uh, <laughs> he, did, he did talk a lot about his feet. He did. Yeah, yeah. I mean, my MVP for this stuff game he does is Devontae feet. Adams' feet. Look at this amazing footwork. I was look like, oh, his, my God, Rex show. Ryan. Dude, give me a break here. So, uh, no, this is going to be a great game. It should be a lot of fun to watch. But I, I think the um, – the bears are very similar to Tennessee in, in my opinion. And uh, they're at home in this game. So they have that, but I, I don't know, man, I, I just, I don't see any way green Bay gives this game up. So I, to me, this is green Bay, just uh, cementing their uh, number one seat here. I, I, I love the bears and they've been playing great, but I, I don't know about this game. This is a tough one for them. I don't know, man. I think this is going to be competitive. I got to tell you, I think they're going to, I think the bears are playing fast and loose right now and nobody thinks they can win. And this in Chicago. I mean, yeah. I'm going to look, I'm, I'm telling you right now, these last two games before we get to the Sunday night game, I think are very investable on both ends of it. The other one's the saints and Panthers because the Panthers have no quit in them. We all know that. <laughs> like they just yeah. don't. And you know, the saints also from a seating standpoint are going to be playing, this game and we'll see if Alvin Gamera can follow up his uh, incredible six touchdown Christmas performance. But this one should be pretty entertaining as well, because Carolina is just, you know, they haven't, they haven't folded the tent up one time all year and I don't expect them to do it in week 17 either. No, they're playing hard. They're, they're definitely playing hard and look, Camara only needs four rushing touchdowns to get to 20 on the year. So uh, now that he got six last week, he went from 10 to six. Like if he gets four this week, that'll be, 50% of his rushing touchdowns in the last two weeks. So uh, I, I'm excited to see that. Let's get, let's get Kamara to 20. All right. There you have it. Of course, you got the Eagles and Washington football team. So who, who wins the NFC East right now? What's the hot take there? I think, uh, I think Washington beats Philly to win it. So uh, I, th- I know that's a boring take and all that stuff. And Washington is uh, a bit banged up right now, specifically at quarterback. And they just waved Haskins. Uh, through all of his nonsense and all that stuff, but uh, it's it's more about me absolutely not trusting Doug Peterson. I can't That's believe fair. how terrible he's been this year. He has been so and damn yet he's so confident in his job. Like he keeps saying how confident he is he's coming back, and I'm like, wow, that's that's great. That's very confident. Uh, who yeah. do you think is the uh, the team that's out in the AFC between that? grouping of Baltimore, Indianapolis, Miami, that whole grouping there. I think it's the Colts, you know, I because Baltimore is going to win against Cincy. I think uh, Buffalo doesn't have a lot to play for this week, so I could see them easily, you know, sitting Josh Allen. So Miami um, is going to take that game. And then Tennessee uh, against Houston, well, I think you mentioned it. You know, I, I know J.J. Watt is going to rally around those guys and try to get them to play hard this last week, but – I just don't see them beating Tennessee. So I think the Colts, you know, unfortunately losing to Pittsburgh last week was a bad blow for them. They're probably going to beat Jacksonville, but I don't see the team that loses outside of those other three. So um, maybe they get a little luck and and something happens. Maybe Houston beats, um, maybe Houston beats Tennessee. That would probably be the closest. Maybe Buffalo and and the backups beat Miami uh, because Tua doesn't play well or something, but um, I don't know. I think the Colts are probably the odd team out in the AFC. I got to tell you, I, th- I have a bad feeling it's going to be the Browns. And I know really? that's, yeah, it's depressing <laughs> to think about. I think for Mason Browns, Rudolph is going to beat Cleveland. I just think there's something in the DNA of the Steelers that does not want to lose to the Browns. And, it, and I'm true. really concerned about the state of the Browns health and mental health right now. After this loss to the Jets, this is a, they're in a weird spot here. I feel like all the confidence flying high, just like what just went to New York and just got destroyed. It would be like, do you remember when uh, the Steelers JV squad beat Buffalo the last week of the yes. season? To, uh, yes, I do. That, that was like James Harrison first breakout game. And Willie Parker was a, a third string running back and went crazy in that game and stuff. So 
Uh, but I believe Brian St. Pierre was the quarterback. So same level as Mason <laughs> yeah. Rudolph. So, uh, you know, that that would be it would be one of those games. And I am here for it. Please, God, <laughs> I would laugh so hard. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah, I got to tell you, I'm a little worried. I'm worried about the health. I'm worried about <laughs> where they're at because, it, you know, that that's that's tough. Like they were so down. You know, it's it's funny. Like the Jets are like the killers here at the end of the season. They're like they took the wind out of the sails of the Rams. They yeah. took the wind out of the seals of the Browns. I mean, <laughs> the Jets are the Jets are like they're like you know what? We're gonna burn this whole league down and take everybody with us. That's I feel like where they are. We can't have Lawrence. You can't have the playoff. <laughs> we can't have nice things. Nobody can. Oh goodness gracious, <laughs> the Jets! All right, make sure you uh, tune in this week for the DFS show on Thursday and the wagering show on Friday with Bogman and myself. You can follow us in the meantime on Twitter at Star NFL, at Star app, at Bogman Sports, and at Joe Pisa Pia 17. That'll do it for us. There's nothing left to do now except down, set, win. You've been listening to the Pre-Snap Podcast brought to you by Star. Hit subscribe, drop a review, tell a friend, and stay tuned for the next episode from fantasy football experts Joe Pisa Pia and Scott Bogman.